Welcome, 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 welcome. I know I come back at sporadic times, but I'm here at least. Thanks for tuning in. If you haven't liked, shared, and subscribed, make the choice today or oh, don't. But anyway, my name is Vuyo or Nom Vuyo Morgan, and I love to create content and I do hair and I love natural hair. So today, I would rather be very ashamed. I'm actually quite ashamed. What's a YouTube channel without a natural hair journey? What's a natural hair YouTube channel without a natural hair journey? I haven't done it. Can you believe it? Since I've had a YouTube channel, which was 2016. I actually don't even think I did a thorough natural hair journey. But I'm going to try to keep it short. So I have been natural since 2013. And I'm not going back. I decided that I was going to go natural in 2011. And this is how the story goes. The reason why I think a natural hair journey is important is because we all have the story, right? And the reason why we went natural or why we returned to natural, if you want to be deep about it. And I decided I want to go natural because I saw so much. <laughs> yeah, the reason I went natural, natural, I'm so hungry. The reason why I went natural is because Solange influenced me. She went natural in 2009 and my friend and I saw her picture while we were in class in grade 11. She, was, she, had, she had an afro wig actually and we thought that was her real hair. But nonetheless, we said let's go natural, let's stop relaxing and maybe our hair will turn natural. But that didn't happen and I had to find out the whole thing about transitioning through YouTube. And so my love affair started with Solange. And I will forever be grateful. And she also started my love affair for vintage clothes too. As you can see, well, this is my mom's shirt, but whatever. So that was 2011. My last relax was November 2011. And February 2013, that's when I cut off my relaxed ends after my unsuccessful attempt at reverting my natural hair. Which doesn't happen, by the way. Once your hair is relaxed, it's relaxed. It's gone. So... I went natural in 2013 and I started my journey there. YouTube was my best friend, DIYs were my best friend. I was doing your egg treatments. I was using whatever products that were available. I was a high school student. So there was no money for me to buy products. So it was a chop and change, experimenting, trial and error phase. And I think everyone has to go through that. And it was a trial and error phase for about until 2015 i believe that's when i started taking my hair more seriously and i was in university and i started making money through my braiding business braids by vuyo hey um so for those couple of years i was like okay let's just do it you know and i was a bit disappointed because my hair didn't turn out like solange's and it didn't grow fast like i thought it would in a year so um i shaved my hair that same year that i went natural and I dyed it red and I became a bad girl. That was my theme for my grade 11 in matric. And no one could stop me. I shaved my hair again in 2013. And then I, for the next two years, grew out my hair, was trying to take care of it. And it was, it was weird because I was one of the few people who had natural hair. I had a friend who had natural hair her whole life and she was my biggest inspiration. And yeah, it was, there was no information enough for me to know my hair specifically apart from the Americans, you know, the usual story. So I continued and when I went to, um, um, what do you call it, university, my first year, I shaved my hair again because I wanted a new, fresh start and everything like that. And so I did it and I was bad girl 2.0, couldn't stop me because I was away from home. I did a fade and I enjoyed it so much. It was amazing. It was carefree. It was whatever, man. So I decided I'm just going to leave my hair and grow it out again. And that's when I started experimenting with products more. And then, and then I had brands contacting me, sending me products and I've been trying products and stuff like that. I wasn't that popular, to be honest. I was well known for my braids. That's, that was my braiding hippie era my colorful braids and it was just fun you know none of it was serious but i did know i wasn't gonna go back to relaxed hair i think generally i've always had a good perspective of my hair 
I was always complimented on my hair when I was younger. The only downside I had was going to the salon and then complaining about the amount of hair I have. And so obviously I had to relax and my parents couldn't take care of my hair. My grandma, my grandmother had to relax my hair. It was painful doing my hair always without fail. So my relationship was half half. Um, me going natural was actually a very easy decision. Let's go back to 2015. First year of university, experimenting with hairstyles. Second year of university, getting more knowledge on how to take care of my hair. Third year of university, my hair was flourishing. Because I was keeping it protected, I was trimming, I was moisturizing, protein treatment, the works, you know, I was doing the things. And my hair was so beautiful by the time I reached third year. It was so long, all for me. And I think that's the longest my hair has been. Um, and then I decided to shave it off. Reason being was I felt that my natural hair was becoming an idol then. Um, and now that I understand it a bit more, um, an idol doesn't go away when you just remove it. It's in the heart, you know. And so I, I felt like I over-spiritualized everything. I did a whole dramatic shaving my hair video, slow, quiet, and everything like that. I was just taking myself way too seriously. But I went through it. And after that, I neglected my hair for about a year because I became severely depressed. <laughs> I was pregnant and I was like, I didn't take care of my hair for about that year. I bleached it for the first time. That was a disaster. I will never do that again. Okay. My hair's high porosity does not handle bleach well. And all along that year, 2018, ugh, it was just a dark time. So I didn't really care about my hair. 2019 came, gave birth, lost my edges. Didn't realize because I didn't really care. And I only realized now that I lost my edges. There was only a proper realization that I lost my edges. Now they're growing back. Um, 2019, I was getting back to taking care of my hair. It was growing. I was cu cutting a lot of it off because of the bleach ends. And I was doing a lot of twisting. 2020, lockdown. My hair flourished. I can tell you for a fact that my hair grew when I did the least to it. I was putting it in twists a lot and I just left it. And my hair was just happy, happy, happy. So that was a big learning curve for me. But the biggest transition happened this year. I am completing or have recently completed, if I post this by the time I'm done, a natural hair care course at Ruto's to become a professional natural hair care stylist with the right knowledge. I've over the years have grown to develop a passion for natural hair that goes beyond the aesthetics. It's more about lifestyle for me. It's about getting other women to love their hair as it is and taking care of it because that's what matters. The attitude first and foremost is the biggest shift that we need to um, go through because we're taught to hate our hair and that hate results in how we manage it. And the biggest thing, the biggest lie is that black hair doesn't grow. I'm on a growth journey now. Uh, fast forward and I want my hair to reach waist length and beyond depending on how much I can take care of it by then It was a bit of an obsession. I just realized and I do have insecurities with my hair that I need to deal with day by day I don't always like it in shrinkage to be honest. I don't think I look beautiful all the time in shrinkage I have my days, but that's just the state of my hair and I have to accept it um, have being someone who was who was for the most loved her hair and had the privilege to love my hair i think it's just a blessing from god i i struggle sometimes the most recently i think i'm realizing that i struggle sometimes with patience detangling um changing my attitude when it comes to the natural state of my hair and also accepting other people's hair because i think we do have bias biases or biases or uh, we like the fuller the the thicker hair right and that's what we see as beautiful but we don't embrace the other the other the hair that's not commercialized as much fine hair short hair the works and i'm on a journey to embrace all those textures because they're all god-given 
And it's until you decide to make that shift in attitude to say, okay, I'm going to go natural, not because I want my hair to look like so-and-so, because that's not going to sustain you. Well, for me, because I love hair, it sustained me somehow. Um, but because I want to make that lifestyle choice. The reason why I'm not going to go back to relax is ever, and my daughter's not going to smell relax in my household, and ever, is um relaxers are harmful the fact that they burn our scalp just means you know what we should not even be going near that thing and i'm going to be a bit controversial but there is a big movement happening of people going back to relaxed hair and do what you want you with your hair sometime in my natural journey i used to be a police and tell people don't relax your pain hey hey don't don't my friends can testify to that i was very harsh but you have a choice as to how you want to have your hair and what makes you happy. But at the end of the day, relaxed hair is not healthy hair. It is not sustainable. And research does show, and I'm not even, to be honest, the fact that I didn't even go and research this. I heard it from Nyaki from naturalhair.ca.za. Research shows that there are links uh, in black women uh, between relaxers and fibroids. I would not be surprised if that were true. I should research that more. I'm not going back to relaxers. Relaxers are not good. They have a history of a history behind it. And it's not a good looking history. So I will not fight people who are getting relaxers. Um, except for my family members. I won't let them. But I will tell you this. Think about the reason you relaxed your hair initially. The biggest lie is that natural hair is 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 you can't handle it it's too tough but natural hair is a lifestyle choice you go into it understanding that i'm gonna have more work to put in but the outcome is worth it i'm gonna have to spend time understanding my hair but the outcome is worth it it's worth it for my health it's worth it because it's beautiful it's versatile way more versatile than chemically treated hair but i will not bash you if you went if you go back to relax or if you have relaxed hair because we also have a lot of fears and maybe not a lot of time on our hands um, or the finances to fund a natural hair journey. And over time, I want to dispel that and try and understand ways that are more suited, um, not just for myself, but for other people in their natural hair journey to make it easier. And there are a lot of influencers doing that. So yeah, one takeaway that I will take away from this is I love my natural hair. It's versatile, it's beautiful, it's God-given. Two, it is a journey. You have to make the choice and understand that it's not gonna look the same as everyone else's and it's not going to be linear. You wanna shave your hair, you're gonna do dreadlocks, you're gonna heat damage it, you're gonna go through hundreds and thousands of products, which you don't have to now because you have enough reviews, but, um, and you're gonna be frustrated, but you are gonna feel that it is more rewarding, I think. I, I propose so that's my natural hair journey in a jiffy <laughs> lies that's my natural hair journey I I do think if you do want to go natural consider it consider it take time to think about it it is a lifestyle change and understand that it's not going to be an overnight process your hair is not going to look like mine mine's not going to look like yours um, so learn to appreciate your hair and it will thrive as it should be patient just understand that it is a journey and there are many people that you can look to for references but do not follow too many people because that's when you become confused get to know who you are get to know what you want out of this journey and stick to it and be consistent that's what I'm learning and if this is of any help I hope you enjoyed let me know what your frustrations are about natural hair what you love about your natural hair and if you're relaxed or have chemical hair chemically treated hair or even have locks which is natural hair because um, i'm speaking about afro specifically what is your fear about going afro or dreadlocked or you know or what is your frustration currently about natural hair and if you have a solution in the comments share that too and we can have a dialogue i hope you enjoyed this video and i will hope to be back sooner than what I've done before. Have a wonderful afternoon.